Hi everyone. Good day to you, wherever you are. And I welcome you to the finest music drama channel. Sharing the love of finest literature. Just lie down on an easy chair. Throw your cares off your mind. Think of nothing but the temperature of your drink. I hope you will enjoy today's dramatization. Your comments are much appreciated. Please support the love of finest literature by subscribing and sharing the channel with friends to get updated on future releases. I will make a short introduction to the book. Then we will enjoy the dramatization afterward. A decanter to the skull. A gently spreading pool of blood beneath the body on the rug. The scream of a servant. A house full of suspects assembles. We can only be having an Agatha Christie. Few writers have had the sustained popularity of Agatha Christie, the queen of the brilliant mystery setup. She was a phenomenal writer, but it's really the hooks of works like Ten Little Indians and Murder on the Orient Express that people remember more than her gifts with a turn of phrase. It's the intrigue, created by her masterful setups, so many of which have been ripped off by inferior writers over the years. One of her best setups is the one she devised for 1958 ordeal by innocence, in which a young man goes to jail for murdering his mother a year later, another man up at the family home and reveals that he is the convicted son's alibi. He couldn't have done it. Which means someone else in the house that night did. The concept of a stranger who completely disrupts a well-to-do family's already fragile piece isn't entirely new, and wasn't even in 1958, but it's brilliantly handled here by a highly pedigreed cast. The patriarch, Leo Argyle, who we meet as he's about to wed his former secretary Gwenda. One horrible night, Leo hears the family housekeeper Kirsten screaming her head off and rushes in to find the bloody body of his wife Rachel. Jack is accused, convicted, and sent to prison, the case particularly closed when his fingerprints are found in his mother's blood. From the beginning, he protests innocence, but no one believes him. Eighteen months later, a man calling himself Dr. Calgary lands on the Argyle doorstep with a story to tell. Let listen to the dramatization. Ordeal by Innocence by Agatha Christie <laughs> Thanks for stopping. I thought I was out of luck. Where are you headed? Uh, Drymouth. You're in luck. Up here. <laughs> It was fine when I set out from Sunny Point, and then the heavens opened. Perhaps it's always fine at Sunny Point. Is it a hotel? A, a house. Our home. It used to be called Viper's Point. My mother changed the name. I can't say I blame her. She likes to look on the bright side of things. <laughs> Whereabouts in Drymouth are you going? A uh, picture drone in the square. Uh, you can drop me anywhere. Well, where are you heading? Ferryport. Oh, day tripper, eh? Something like that. <laughs> oh, uh, anywhere here will be fine. I can walk the rest of the way. Looks like it's clearing up. Your mother will be pleased. Yes, I suppose she will. Do you remember your name? Calgary. Dr. Arthur Calgary. Why? Why wouldn't I remember? You've been under a long time. Under? How long? A little over a year. A year? You've been extremely lucky to come back to us at all. But there can be lasting damage. Do you remember who you are, what you do? I'm... I'm 38. Uh, a geophysicist. I've just come back from uh, from an expedition to the Antarctic. No, uh, uh, not just. A little over a year ago. Uh, 
What's the last thing you can recall? Um, I, I'd been away for six months. I, I arrived back from the airport. Um, I was almost home, I think, crossing the road, and then... I, 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 I don't know what happened then. Hmm. A truck lost control, uh, ran you down in the middle of the road. I wouldn't expect you to recall any of that. Your memory seems to be unscathed. What about the rest of me? Can I walk? My legs. Uh, your legs were broken, but they've had plenty of time to heal. Now it's just a matter of getting you back on your feet. Dr. Calgary? Mm -hmm. uh, no, please, keep on with your exercises, if you can talk at the same time. Are you here to assess me for discharge? No, sorry, my name's Marshall. I'm a lawyer. For the truck driver? Uh, this has nothing to do with your accidents, Dr. Calgary. Not directly, at least. I'm the lawyer for the Argyle family. For Jacko Argyle. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> they tell me my memory's completely returned, but I, I can't place that name. Unfortunately, Jacko didn't tell you his name. And you didn't tell him yours. That's why it's taken me so long. But when I read the piece your doctor wrote on your remarkable recovery, I realized I'd found you. The man in the blue car. I don't have a car. Before your expedition to the Antarctic, you drove a car to Drymouth? Oh, my godfather's car. Yes, I borrowed it when I visited the island. I gave it back to him before catching the ferry to the mainland. He, uh, he passed away while I was gone. That night, before you caught the ferry, do you remember giving anyone a lift? Um... Yes, a young man caught in a rainstorm. Was that Jacka? Uh, do you remember what time you picked him up? I know this is asking a great deal. Twenty to I... seven. There's a clock on the dashboard. And I'm a scientist. Numbers stick in my mind. <laughs> Why? Is Jacko in some kind of trouble? He was convicted of murder. You were his alibi. His mother was killed between 6.30 and 7 o'clock. Your timing proves he must have left the house while she was still alive. Are you all right? Please tell me they haven't hanged him yet. Jacko caught pneumonia and died in prison. His dying wish was that I should find you, clear his name. Poor oh boy. You mean he died with everyone thinking he killed his own mother? It wasn't quite that simple. Jacko had form. There was good reason to think he was lying about his alibi. But he was with me. But there must be some way for me to make it up to his family. You are in no way to blame, Dr. Calgary. I'll write to his family. See how they wish to proceed. It was Sunny Point, wasn't it? The name of their home on the island. Your memory is perfect. But I would advise you not to get involved. You should get on with your life. And let them get on with theirs. Lean forwards a little, Philip. Let me untuck you. Clean shirt for dinner, I think. Do we have to go? It's only down the corridor. Tell them I need to rest. Why? What's the matter? Nothing's the matter, Mary. I might have lost the use of my legs, but I'm quite strong and well. I just don't want to go to dinner with your family. Well, you can leave it all to me, darling. I'll wheel you there, and all you have to do is eat, drink, and look happy. <sighs> Another scintillating night at Sunny Point. Tonight is special, Philip. We have to make an effort. I haven't asked you to do a family event in ages. Maybe if we weren't staying here, then it would be special. Mickey's coming, Tina, and Hester's back. We haven't all been together since... Since Jacko's funeral. And you wonder why I'm not looking forward to it. It'll be good to see everyone. I'm excited. Very well. I'll play along then. But only if you agree we can go back home tomorrow. If Father says what I think he's going to say tonight, I'll know it's safe to leave him here on his own. Leo's never on his own. He's always with Gwenda. Exactly. And tonight we'll see if she's going to stay. Now, let me comb your hair. It's gone all messed up. Leo, your tie's all crooked. I wonder how that could have happened. <laughs> Your secretary's not looking after you, clearly. I'm going to have her sacked <laughs> and reinstated as my wife. What is it, Gwenda? You're not having second thoughts. I'm just worried about the children. If it's too soon to tell them. Lots of men remarry within the year. 
We've waited for two. It's perfectly respectable. Don't you think it's different, given the way Rachel died? What if the children think you're still grieving, that I'm taking advantage? Is that what you think? That I still love Rachel? No. I know how you felt about her. And you know how I feel about you. What if they think something was going on between us before? Why ever would they think that? Please, stop worrying about the past. Tonight is about the future. Our future. <laughs> Tina! The Tina! Wait! Hurry up then, slow coach. I didn't know you'd be walking from Drymouth. You should have said. During one of our many chats. We can chat whenever you like. I just assumed you're busy with your job. I'm only a librarian, Mickey. That's why we don't chat. I assume you want to talk about books, clever things. I'd have thought you'd got to lift up here with one of your motorcycling friends. They're not my friends. I just help them fix their bikes. I couldn't understand engines if I tried. You're a lot cleverer than you think, Mickey. I don't know. It's... I do. I thought I could hitch a lift from a car, but no one's been passed. The road's been dead all the way. It would have been about here, wouldn't it? Where Jack I suppose so. If he hadn't been lying. Yes, that's what I meant. If he hadn't been lying. Now, come on, then. Let's get a move on. Or Kirsten will have our guts for garters. Anything I can help you with, Kirsten? You can keep a look at my brother and sister. They're late. Mickey and Tina. Always the same with those two. Thick as these. You still see us like we're children, Kirsten. I don't think Mickey and Tina even see each other now. Always the same when they get together. I dread to think what you say about me. Nonsense. You love to think of it, Hester. It's the actress in you. You love to read your reviews, even the bad ones. All the better for tantrums and tears. I'm not an actress. Not anymore. You're still a baby. Not even 20. There's plenty of time for you to grow up. Oh, I might be more grown up than you think, Kirsten. What is that supposed to mean? It's a secret. I might tell you all later. Or I might not. A little baby. Just as I said. Now, run along and find the others or the dinner will be ruined. <laughs> First of all... Watch out, Father's going to make speech. <laughs> Mickey, go on, Father. Thank you, Mary. First of all, let me thank you for coming home. It's been too long since we've all been here together, enjoying ourselves. Your mother would never have wanted us to spend the rest of our lives in mourning. She would want us to be happy. Are you sure about that, Father? Even your secretary? <laughs> Stop encouraging him. Tina. <laughs> Sorry, Mary. And Gwenda, we didn't mean it. I'm not just his secretary. Not anymore. Not for a long time. Philip, darling, <laughs> we're listening to Father. Your mother would want us to be happy. And we are. I think. I know that I am. That's why I wanted you all here tonight. Because I... Well, Gwenda and I, we've got something to tell you. I'm getting married. Oh, Hester. <gasps> Always has to steal the line. <laughs> well, congratulations, Hester. Who's the victim? Uh, Donald Craig, of course. Yeah. Well, he hasn't actually asked me yet. But he's asked me to go for a picnic on the beach tomorrow. He couldn't help blushing when he asked if we could come back here afterwards so he could speak to you, Father. Well, if you think he'll make you happy, Esther, then of course I'll give my consent. No one could make Esther happy. She enjoys tragedy far too much. <laughs> now, what, what did you want to tell us, Father? Imagine me, a doctor's wife. <laughs> so why do you think you'd have the wedding? It was nothing, Mary, really. Another time, Leo. Gwenda, are you angry? Let Hester have her moment. She's been so unhappy for so long. Now look at her. You're a wonderful woman. I'm so lucky. I'll get it. Oh, no, no, let me. It's probably Donald come to surprise me. <laughs> oh, uh, hello. Hello. I, I'm looking for the Argyle family. I'm Hester Argyle. How can I help you? Well, I'm hoping I can help you. Uh, my name is Arthur Calgary, Dr. Arthur Calgary. Is your father here? We're all here. Why? What's this about? May I come in? 
is the yes. mysterious Dr. Calgary. He's come to Sunny Point to help us. Sorry, I'm interrupting your dinner. No, no, we were just... Uh, I'm Leo Argyle. Shall we go through to my study? Uh, he wants to see all of us. If you don't mind. Well, we're all here. These are my children, Mickey, Tina, yeah. Mary and her husband, Philip. Hester, you've met. And Kirsten Lindstrom is our housekeeper, one of the family. And this is Gwenda. Gwenda Vaughan, my, my secretary. What's this all about, Dr Calgary? It's about Jacko. What about Jacko? Uh, this, is, this is more difficult than I was expecting. If it helps, nothing you have to tell us is likely to surprise. Whatever he did to you, we can only apologise. But you see, we don't believe he was ever really responsible for his actions. He was always the same, even as a little boy. One of nature's misfits, I'm afraid. If we can recompense you in any way... Oh, there is no question of Jacko having done anything to me. Uh, if I can explain... Yeah, I think I... you better have. I'm a geophysicist. I was away on a long expedition, and when I got back, I had an accident. I've been out of touch with the world, with uh, current events. With murder trials, you mean? Yes, Miss Vaughan, that is exactly what I mean. I don't understand. Am I being dense, Mickey? Hey, come on, Calgary, what are you saying? Uh, please, forgive me, this is painful for me. Uh, what I did to your brother, I mean, to all of you. On November the 9th, the year before last, at about six o'clock, Jacko met with his mother, your mother, Mrs Argyle. He wanted money. She'd given in to him before, but this time she refused. We know all this. Why are you telling us? Who is he? I thought he said he was a scientist. Look, I know this seems strange, but I, I need to set out what you think you know, if you'll just bear with me. Later that evening, your mother was killed. <coughs> A sum of money went missing, and when the police picked Jacko up, the money was found on him. Hmm. He was charged and convicted of willful murder. But Jacko denied all the charges right up to the end. And he insisted he had an alibi. Someone picked him up hitchhiking. The police said it was the kind of lie Jacko would come up with. Impossible to prove, but hopefully enough to cast doubt among the jury. And when that didn't work out, he played the mentally unstable card. He was mentally unstable, Mary. All murderers are mentally unstable to some extent. Jocko knew what he was doing. No, Kirsten. Even my wife would have been the first to forgive the boy for what he did. He didn't seem to be able to help it. So you all took this on board, as did the jury, and none of you, it seems, had any doubts of his guilt? Why would we? He was guilty. Not really guilty. I don't like that word. Jacko Argyle was innocent. You mean that you agree with me? You don't feel he was responsible for his actions? No, I mean, he didn't do it. He couldn't have done it. Jacko was innocent. And if it wasn't for the most terrible set of circumstances, I could have proved it. I am his alibi. I was the man in the car. Good Lord. I picked him up at 20 to 7 on the road to Drymouth. I thought him a rather likeable young man. Jacko certainly had charm. That's how criminals get away with the terrible things they do. But he didn't do it. This is what I'm telling you. And he didn't get away with anything. He was condemned and died unjustly, and that is my fault. I had to come and tell you that your son, your brother, Jacko, whatever his shortcomings, was not a murderer. I've spoken to Mr Marshall. The case will be referred to the Home Secretary, and in time, Jacko will receive a full pardon. Oh. I, I understand your feelings towards me can never be kindly. Mr. Marshall and the police, they tell me that I'm blameless, but but I know all of you must blame me. Look, I know this is a shock, but please, for pity's sake, somebody say something. Did they believe you? What? Mr. Marshall, the police, did they believe your story? You could be making it all up. I, I have no axe to grind. They have investigated, they've corroborated, of course they believe me. Why, don't you? I see. Well, there's nothing more to say, except how sorry I am, and to ask when you're ready for your forgiveness. It must mean something to know that he didn't do this awful thing, to know that his name, your name, will be cleared in the eyes of the world. <laughs> Hester! You'd better go now, Dr Calgary. Kirsten will show you out. I don't know what reaction I expected. Gratitude, relief, anger even, but not... God, what was that? It is better always to leave well alone. You can't possibly think that in this circumstance. You cannot bring Jaco back to life. 
Why bring it all back to their minds? Now they will suffer. His memory must be cleared. I have brought them up, all of the children, and I love them, every one. But Jaco, he was no good. I loved him, but he was no good. Hester, go back inside. Why did you come here, Dr Calgary? Why did you have to come? Don't you want your brother to have justice? Jacko's dead. It's not him who matters now, it's us. Don't you see what you've done to us? It's not the guilty who matter, it's the innocent. <laughs> come here, Hester. You should go, Dr Calgary. Are you all right, Hester? Go. Get out of here. And do not ever come back. After all this time... The missing witness. Jacko's luck was out that night. And everyone else's luck is out tonight. Why? Hester, has he gone? Yes, he's, he's gone. Hester, here, a little brandy. That's not going to help. It'll help me. Pass it here. <laughs> he thought we would be pleased. I suppose it was brave of Dr Calgary in a way. But I wish he hadn't come. We all think that. Do you think so, Kirsten? I can envisage certain possibilities that Dr Calgary does not seem to have thought about. What possibilities? Oh, come on, Tina. Now you are being slow. Well, maybe she's just pure. It hasn't crossed her mind. <gasps> How am I going to tell Donald? Let's oh. not tell anyone. Not just yet. Don't be naive, Father. Dr Calgary's told the police. It'll be in the papers before the week's out. Oh. I need to talk to Mr Marshall. Get him to advise me. I I'm sure he'll know what to do, Leo. I don't think there's much that can be done. Not unless one of us wants to own up right now. Get the matter over with. What? I'm sorry, but I don't... The possibilities, Tina. If Jacko didn't do it, then someone here in this room did. Well, come on, you lot. What's the betting? Which one of us is the real killer? Philip's tired. No, I'm not. No, we should all get some rest. I'll get hold of Mr Marshall. Thank you, Gwenda. I hope you did anything, sorry. I'll have some of that brandy now. Me too, please, Mickey. Have the lot. But it won't make all this go away. Mickey? Where are you going? Wait! I just want to talk. I did wonder. Didn't bring your car this time. It wasn't mine. Did you want to talk about Jacko? No, about you. See what kind of a chap you are. Not the kind who makes things up. It all comes down to a matter of minutes, before or after seven when you picked him up, just around here. Uh, your watch could have been wrong. I've been through this with the police. It all adds up. All right, but... I'm not one of these professors you get in stories. Odd socks all over the place. In my line, you have to be precise in your calculations. No room for error. Jacko could have led you up the garden path somehow. It was full of tricks. I don't understand. Why are you so anxious to prove me wrong? I thought it might be hard to convince the authorities that Jacko was innocent. I didn't expect it to be so hard to convince his own family. We don't want to be convinced. We don't want to believe you. Your brother was innocent. He wasn't my brother. She wasn't my mother. We were adopted. All of us, me, Mary, Tina, Hester and Jacko. We were evacuees from all over the place. Rachel Argyle collected us during the war, made herself a nice little mixed-up family. But you picked the wrong kid with Jacko. I had no idea. So don't try and pull the your brother thing with me. Jacko was a louse. But not a murderer. Surely that's something. You still haven't thought things through, have you? If Jacko wasn't a murderer, then who did kill our darling adopted mother? Have a think about that now. And then you'll start to see what you're doing to us all. Pajamas, red or blue? I'm not going to bed yet. How can you be so calm about it, Mary? Oh, I feel like I've imagined the whole thing. It's an unsolved crime. They'll have to reinvestigate. But after all this time, and after the mess they made over Jacko, surely they won't want to rake it all up. They don't have any choice. Duty is duty. I'm sure you're wrong, Philip. There will just be a bit of talk, and then it'll all die down. And then our lives will go on happily ever afterwards at Sunny Point, with a murderer in our midst. Are you cramped? Do you want another cushion? I want to go home. It's much better for you here than in our little flat. Don't you think that it makes sense to get away from your family before they get the urge to kill again? Whichever one of them it is. Don't be like that. Please, Philip. We need to present a united front. You're as bad as Hester. Your capacity for pretense. Imagine how it would look if we left now. Like we were running for our lives? Like we had something to hide. Now, get your eyes. Red tonight, I think. Thank you. 
Oh, Tina. How am I supposed to tell Donald? Tell him tomorrow, at your picnic. Before or after he proposes? Afterwards. When he can't change his mind. <laughs> I'm joking, Hester. It's not a joke. It's my life. He's not going to marry me if he thinks I might be a murderer. You aren't, though. Are you? <laughs> no, really, Hester. If Donald loves you, he'll know. How will he? How will any of us ever know the truth? One of us knows. At least one of us. Gwenda, thank you for staying strong in there, darling. Gwenda Vaughan, you mean? Your secretary? Sorry. I wasn't thinking. I should probably get used to it now. They'll be looking for people who had a motive. If we announce our engagement, they won't have far to look. They can look, but they won't find anything. What did Mr Marshall say? He said sorry, mainly. He tracked Calgary down. It was Jacko's last request. So this is all Jacko's fault? We can't blame him now. Not anymore. What did Mr Marshall advise? That we cooperate with the police. Tell the truth. We did that before. Someone didn't. Not necessarily. Gwenda, what are you thinking? Only that everything pointed so obviously to Jacko. The arrest was made so swiftly. That no one seriously considered the alternatives. They're unbearable to consider. That one of us... No. Leo, not one of us. An outsider. Kirsten! Kirsten is one of us. I mean, a real outsider. If you think about it... The spur of the moment violence and the missing money. The money was found on Jacko. Some money was. Maybe not Rachel's. Who knows? There could have been a break in, a burglar. Yes. Yes, I suppose there could have been. Mr. Argar, Superintendent Hewish is here. Uh, bring him in, Kirsten. And Gwenda, will you speak to everyone else? About the burglar? What burglar? Gwenda will explain everything, quickly. Sorry to have to put you through all this again, sir, but with the new evidence that's come to light... My family and I will do everything we can to help you, Superintendent Hewish. Thank you, Mr Argyll. So, if you can recall your movements on the night of your wife's death... I was in my study, working with my secretary. I was in the study, working with Mr Argyll. I was looking after Philip, my husband, in our room. He's an invalid. Mary was fussing over me in our room, as usual. I was on my own in the library, reading a book. I went out for a walk around the grounds, by myself. I was in my room, rehearsing my lines. I didn't hear a thing till Kirsten screamed. I had heard Rachel rowing with Jocko. I took her up a drink to calm her nerves. That is when I found her. I still believe it was Jocko. Even in the light of the alibi from Dr Calgary? I've been thinking about that a lot, Superintendent, and what I... I can't help thinking. Anyone could have walked in. Anyone could have walked in. Someone who'd been watching the house knew there'd be money. The violence suggests a spur of the moment crime. Mother must have surprised him. He must have grabbed the poker and... Poor mother. So you believe it was a burglar too, Miss Argyle? I don't see who else it would possibly have been. Do you think there's any chance you'll catch them now, Superintendent? Not very likely, Miss Vaughan. Not after all this time. You will let us know, won't you, if there's anything we can do to help? Uh, Arthur Calgary. I called from the mainland yesterday. A single room. Good evening, Mr Calgary. It's room 14, just up the stairs. Will you be staying long to see the island? Uh, no, I'm afraid something has uh, come up. I'll be on my way first thing tomorrow. Well, I hope you have a good night's rest here, sir. Thank you. So do I. <laughs> Thanks for stopping. I thought I was out of luck. Where are you heading? Where do you think? <laughs> Whereabouts in Drymouth are you going? I can't go to Drymouth. I can't go anywhere, can I? Jacko, I, I was just trying to help. You should have tried a bit harder, Doc. It wasn't my fault. But it wasn't mine. I didn't do anything. Now look at me. Look at me, Calvary. <laughs> look what you did. No! No, please stop it! You'll kill us! You killed me! I didn't do anything! I didn't, You'll have I didn't to do, do anything. something now. Find out who did it, or I'll never let you rest. Never! <laughs> Mm. 
Superintendent Hewish. Thank you for seeing me. Not at all, Dr. Calgary. How may I help you? I'd actually like to help you with the Argyle case. Don't you think you've done enough already? I'm sorry? Stirring it all up again? It was Jacko's dying wish that his name be cleared. Would you rather the real murderer had got away with it for good? I think they'll get away with it anyway. It's a cold trail. No new evidence except your statement, which proves that one of the family has to be lying. But there is no real way of telling which one of them it is. Well, then we have to interview them all. I did. Last night. And? They all stuck to the same story. Some cock and bull about a burglary. They're not going to give anything away. That doesn't make sense. If you don't find the killer, the whole family is under suspicion for the rest of their lives. They must want to know the truth. They know the odds of us catching the killer after all this time, even if you don't. At least if they all agree to tell the same lie, they can sleep a little safer in their beds at night. And I'll have no more murders to deal with at Sunny Point. Can you imagine what it will be like for them, year after year, looking at each other and wondering? How can they ever trust each other? I could interview them again, but I know what they'd say. We may never know the truth. No, you're right. There's no point. Let's just leave the case open and leave them be. It's in the papers. Already? Let me see. No, Philip, we don't want to know what they're saying about us. I do. It's just the facts so far. Dr. Calgary's evidence proving that Jacko was innocent. That's just the beginning, though, isn't it, Daddy? Next thing, they'll be on the phone outside the house asking our friends all about us. If we still have any friends. Don't say that, Philip. You know, it's true, Hester. People will steer clear of Sunny Point when they realise there's still a killer on the loose here. What will your Donald Craig think? He... he won't believe the papers. Of course he won't. Philip, don't tease her. It's all right for you to revel in all of this, Philip. You're the only one who's safe from suspicion. How do you work that out? You can't walk. How could you have killed anyone? My trusty wife and nursemaid will do whatever I tell her. I'd be guilty as an accomplice. Don't even joke about it, please. Mary is right. We must not begin to harbour such suspicions. None of us did it. Exactly, Kirsten. Like we told Superintendent Hewish, it was a burglary that went wrong. Oh, come on. Do you really think he believes that, Leo? Do you think the papers will? I think the papers will soon find something else to write about. And the police seemed to be just going through the motions. If we stay strong, stay together, we can get through this. Leo, the Daily Herald is on the phone. They'd like an interview. No, and tell them not to bother sending a reporter. <laughs> it might be too late. Get off this property or I am calling the police. I've just come from the police. Good morning, Miss Lindstrom. May I come in and speak to the family? I think you have said quite enough. You don't understand. Goodbye, her. Dr. Calgary. Dr. Calgary? I can't believe you have the nerve to come back here. Hester, please, I want to help. That's what you said yesterday, and now we're falling apart. I'm sorry. I thought I was ending something. But now I see I was starting something, and now you're all dreading what might be coming next. That's why I've come back. Because no one should have to live with that dread. This needs to be finished. And it's my responsibility to finish it. How are you going to do that? He can't. Tell him to go. Will you let me come in, Hester? Please. Oh, it's you. Hester, let him in. I'm sorry, I... I had no choice. Morning, Dr. Calgary. You come to tell us you dreamt it all? It's all been a big mistake. Unfortunately not. I can't change what's happened. But I can try to make it up to you. And to Jacko. I don't see what you can do. The police practically admitted the case will remain unsolved. I know, that's why I'm here. Uh, where are the others? Tina works at the library. Mickey Lodge is in Drymouth. Gwenda. Miss Vaughan is dealing with a phone call. I'll speak to them later. Hopefully if you've all pitched in, they'll feel duty-bound to follow suit. Pitched in with what? What are you suggesting? It's a long shot, but I'd like to talk to you all, one-to-one. -one. See if the police are right, that there really is no other new evidence that might shed light on the case. You want to interview us. What right have you? My accident prevented me from doing the right thing while your brother was still alive. I could have saved him. Your mother's murder could have been solved. It's my responsibility to do the right thing now, not let this fester for the rest of your lives destroying you all. We won't let it destroy us. You have no choice. Unless you're all murderers, then some of you, most of you, are good people. You deserve to live your life without being crippled by suspicion and fear. We don't care what other people think. Hester cares. And I think you do, Leo. You care whether your children can look you in the eye 
Or if they think you have something to hide. What if you make things even worse? I think we should give it a go. No. Philip, remember what we agreed. I didn't agree to anything. I could talk to who I like. And this time, I'm going to tell the truth. Whether the rest of you do or not, that's a matter for your consciences. If you're innocent like me, you have nothing to fear. Thank you, Philip. I appreciate this. I won't be much help. I was stuck in my room when Rachel was killed. I only know what people told me. Still, if you could run through it, at least. Rachel was in her study. Jacko went in at 6.30 asking for money. Rachel refused. They argued. We thought he'd brooded, gone back, struck her with the poker and made off with the cash. But now, it seems, he left after the row and, and someone else went in after, framed Jacko. He had a history, he had some money on him. We thought he had no alibi. And you've never suspected it wasn't him? Not for a moment. Uh, after the initial shock, everyone has just carried on as normal, happier than ever. Happier? Well, isn't that a little strange? Leo found comfort with his secretary, Gwenda. I'd never seen him so content. Hester found romance with Donald Craig. Mickey and Tina moved out. Pretty much everyone seemed to find a fresh start. And what about you and Mary? Mary thinks she's happy as long as we're together, but... I I'm sorry to confess that my interest in your case is not purely to assist you in achieving justice. Then why? I'm bored. To death. I live the life of a pampered child and I've been powerless to change it. But now, maybe I can be useful. Since you came, I've been watching them. They're not so happy now. M most because they're wrongly under suspicion, but one of them because they're finally under threat. Between us, I believe we can find out who that is. What part do you propose to play? You can interview them. Maybe you'll find something out. But the rest of the time, I can watch. Talk to them when their guard's down. Say the things you can't. Well, try to trip them up, trap them into telling the truth? I know them. They're bound to give something away. Isn't that rather dangerous for you? I think it'll be rather fun. Tell me everything you know. has to have been a burglar. Please, Hester, you must have agreed to be interviewed for a reason. I felt bad for yelling at you yesterday. So you've got a conscience, too. I can't tell you anything more about that night. I don't know anything, honestly. Then tell me about your mother, Rachel Argyle. What about her? She wasn't your real mother, was she? None of us were her children. We were evacuees, orphans, mostly. But she treated us like her own. And you loved her like your own? She gave us everything we could ask for. So why did you run away? Oh, I should have guessed. Philip has been filling your head with stories about all of us. You didn't run away, then? Not because of Mother. It was me. The way I am. I, I was young, stupid, thought I wanted to be an actress. Mother said I wasn't cut out for it. But she was right. Did you resent that? How could I resent her after everything she'd done? Mother tried her best. She took us all in during the war. She kept us. She set us up for life. None of us had any reason to hurt her. Someone did. Who do you think it was, Hester? If I knew, I would tell you. I would have told the police. If Don thinks it's me... Your fiancé. He's not my fiancé yet. He might never be now, unless you find out who did it. So that's why you're helping me. I'm a good person. I want to get married and live happily ever after. You've got to help me, Dr Calgary. Would you like me to fetch you some more tea, Philip? No, no, I'm fine. Don't go, Kirsten. Talk to me. We've talked enough today, I'm sure. What have you been telling Dr Calgary about us? Only the truth. You have nothing to worry about. We should all be worried now. Especially you. Is that a threat? Shall I make my own tea now? I love this family. I do not want any of them to come to harm. But now with him asking questions and you playing games, I fear someone will be harmed. Who do you think it was, Kirsten? You know us all better than anyone. Just say a name. An initial. Philip, be on your guard against all of us. My wife loved children, but unfortunately we were unable. So you chose to adopt? Rachel set this place up as a home for evacuees during the war. We brought Kirsten in to help. She'd come over from Sweden, a very able nurse, good with children. After the war, some of them went back home, but the ones who'd lost both parents or whose mothers couldn't cope alone, we kept them on here afterwards. They became our children. You didn't mind her lavishing your money on them? Of course not. I loved them. I still do. 
And besides, it was her money. Well, I, I didn't know. She was very generous. So she may have given Jacko the money that night. After all, if he was telling the truth about me, he was probably honest about that, too. Possibly. I just assumed... What, that Jacko was lying? Were you the main beneficiary of your wife's will, Mr. Argar? The estate was divided equally between the children and me. Kirsten also got a small annuity. So you all benefited from your wife's death in financial terms. Apart from Miss Vaughan, of course, your secretary. Did your wife like her? Why don't we go out, Philip? Lean forward. Get some fresh air. Do you think it was Mickey? We could go home. You'd like that? I would have done before. But now I'd rather stay. It won't take me long to pack. I'm having the time of my life. Did you say something to Dr Calgary about Mickey? Just that he didn't like your mother all that much. What did you tell him about me? I think you should tell him yourself, Mary. Tell him why you lied, pretending you never left our room. It wasn't me or Mickey. If it was anyone here, it must have been Kirsten or Gwenda. They're the outsiders. I see it doesn't take much for you to turn on someone. No wonder Kirsten was scared. I didn't kill Rachel. I never said a cross word to her. You were scared of her, Miss Vaughan? We all were. All the children tried to escape one way or another. So they all might have reason to lash out at her? Never if dead. None of us could stand up to her. Not even her husband? Leo, least of all. He'd been trapped the longest. And he... he needed her money. Well, of course, he has that now. And he has you, too. There was nothing between Leo and me before. He was so unhappy he couldn't even imagine being free. And now it looks like we never will be. It's like she's still alive, ruining things for the rest of us. That's why you have to tell me. Who do you think did it? Calgary. Fancy a catch-up over lunch? Oh, I should press on. Just a couple more interviews here and then into town to track down Mickey and Tina. You should call by the picture drone, too. See Jacko's wife. What? His wife? What, did everyone just forget to mention her? <laughs> they were only married a few weeks. Never even lived together. She was just some floozy. The picture drone? That's where he was going when I gave him the lift. He was arrested before he got there. She won't know anything much. But it might be worth you meeting. What about our list of suspects? Any breakthroughs? Gwenda was refreshingly candid about your late mother-in-law. Yes, you'll find those of us who haven't been here so long are more forthcoming. Have you unearthed anything? A warning from Kirsten and denials from my wife. Everyone's on edge. They only need a little push. I'm seeing Mary next. She's the only one you haven't told me much about. In a way, she's the one I know the least. Sounds mad to say that about my own wife, but... Sometimes I want to shock her, just to see who she really is. I took a tea tray to our room, mine and Philip's. We were there until we heard Kirsten scream. You didn't leave the room? We were playing cards. Well, Philip says he went to sleep. I, I like to be there in case he wakes and needs help. He says you're suddenly eager to move back home. Well, do you blame me? <laughs> the atmosphere since you came. <laughs> well, don't you want us to find the killer? I know it wasn't either of us. That's all that matters. And what about the rest of your family? Earlier that day, I heard Mother and Gwenda arguing. Mother said, you will never have my husband. And if it was Gwenda, you wouldn't care too much? Just like you didn't care too much that it was Jacko. I just want to go home with my husband before your little games get him killed. Your lunch, Dr Calgary. That's very kind, but I'd rather talk to you, Kirsten. I have nothing to say to you. Not even if I tell you some people think it was you? Because I was the one who found the body? That's understandable. That's not why. It's because you're not one of the family. I have been here longer than all of them, except Leo. I came to help Rachel with the children. I stayed to look after them. You stayed for them, not for her. She liked to think of herself as their mother, but I was the one they ran to. And now I'm the one they blame. <laughs> but I did not do it. So who did? You must have some idea. Of course I do. I have said so all along. It was Jaco. I loved him and I am sorry he died, but he was no good and he killed her. 
Somehow, it was Draco. Leo? Oh. Oh, I'm sorry, Gwenda. I thought he was alone. Just uh, wondering if I could have a word? But not now, Philip. I was just telling Gwenda she could go if she didn't wish to be sullied with this scandal. And I didn't dignify his suggestion with a reply. Are you sure you still want to get married? We can go away somewhere abroad. If I were you, Gwenda, I'd run like hell. Donald Craig is here, Mr. Argyle. Oh, some happy news at last. He does not look happy, and Hester is not with him. Oh. He must have broken it off. What did I tell you, Gwenda? Run like hell. Vicky! I've been looking for you everywhere. I had a feeling you'd be back, Calgary. I've been talking to your family, uh, trying to see if the police have missed anything. Obviously missed something. I hear you didn't get along with your mother. Well, no one could have missed that. On the contrary. The outward impression is that she was a fine, unselfish woman, devoted to her children and who doted on her. I hated her. I wasn't an orphan like the others, but she still kept me. She convinced my real mother I'd have a better life here. Then my mother died. Well, you think if you'd stayed, she might be still alive? I'm not such a romantic, but I loved her all the same. And I hated Rachel Argyle. She ruined my life. Yet still they all thought it was Jacko. So did you. I just went along with everyone else. There was always something. What? About the way she was killed, the violence of it. That didn't seem like his style. Jacko was a liar and a cheat, but he kept his hands clean. What do you mean? That he poisoned her? Get someone else to do it for him. Like me. <laughs> it's too late to prove anything now. <laughs> Esther? Oh, leave me alone, please, Philip. Leo told me. He turned Donald down. <laughs> what we don't understand is... Why? Well, he said none of it mattered. He still wanted to marry me. I wanted to believe him, but when I looked in his eyes... Hey, hey, I understand. I don't. I thought if he loved me, he'd know I could never... It doesn't work like that, Esther. How could he marry me, always wondering? You think love conquers all in the beginning, but sooner or later, you wake up and realise... <laughs> Some part of him thinks I'm capable of killing Mother. Then you did the right thing, turning him down. It's all right for you, Philip. You're in the clear. You've got Mary. You've got everything. Shh. Come here, little Esther. Don't cry. I'll always be alone. No, you won't. <laughs> Philip! Philip, it's time for your... Oh! Mary, I I'm sorry. Oh! I did... Hester, come back here! It's not her fault. She was upset. I, I was just comforting her. I loved my mother. I'd have no reason to hurt her. I've talked to everyone else, Tina. They've told me how it really was. The others might have had problems with mother. But she looked after me and I loved her. I miss her. Do you miss Jacko? Not really. Everyone had a problem with Jacko. Philip says you're like a cat. You only care for those who are useful to you. Apart from Mickey. He thinks the two of you might be in love. Philip's got his own problems. He's a clever man, he thinks a lot, but he doesn't know me. Not really. Do you know who did it, Tina? I hope I don't know anything. What does that mean? I love the family I have left. I don't want to lose them. Where's Hester? I wish I knew. Then I could get my hands on her. Is this why you've been wanting to stay here? Because of Hester? Nothing happened, Mary. It's this place. These people making you ill. What are you doing? Packing. When we get back, I can take proper care of you. I'm staying here. I'm writing up my findings for Dr Calgary. And then I'll go and see him at his hotel. I'm going to get a room there, too. What are you talking about? I need to get away. We're going home to our flat. Away from you. I need time on my own. You can't cope. You need me. I can do more than you think. Please, Philip, let me stay. I'll write it up for you. No, thank you, Mary. I can manage it myself. <laughs> oh, 
I'm glad Jacko's been cleared. You're the first person to say that, Miss Clegg. It's Mrs. I married again three months ago. To Joe Clegg. He couldn't stand Jacko. Well, maybe he'll think less badly of him now. Oh, it wasn't because of what he did to his mum. What we thought he did. Joe hated him because... Jack wasn't what you'd call the steady type. He cheated on you? I don't know how he did it. He wasn't good looking. Just got this way about him. You'd find yourself doing anything you wanted. Mind you, it came in useful. My boss here, old cow. Jacko could flatter her, get me out of any kind of trouble. She was crazy about him. And so were you? Must have been. Never thought it would last, though. Not like with Joe. Did you really think he'd done it? Killed his own mother for money? Even though he said he didn't? You could never believe anything Jacko said. Do you think his mother would have given him money? I'd never met her, so I couldn't say. You never met her? It was our secret, see. He said they might cut him off. But they weren't too bad, as it turned out. Well, you met them afterwards. Yeah, I thought I should, before it came out in the papers. That foreign woman was the worst. It's impossible, she kept saying. It's impossible he should be married to you. Well, married we are, I said. And not in a registry office, neither. In a church. Jacko's dad was much nicer. He gave me an allowance. So you don't know which of the family might have let Jacko take the fall? He said they all hated him, but I could see their side. He'd swindled them all one way or another. Maybe that little sister of his. They never got on. You mean Hester? That's her. Saw her on the cliffs on my way to work just now, crying her eyes out. I offered her a hanky, but she just looked right through me. Stuck up cow. <laughs> Come away from the edge! Don't! It's all right, I've got you. What are you doing here? I won't let any more deaths come from this. It's all over. With Don, with my family. Is there something you want to tell me, Hester? Oh, you think I'm the killer too? Well, why else would you be trying to kill yourself? Philip kissed me. Mary will never forgive me. It's your fault. You've ruined everything, and now you think I'm the killer. It must have been you who kissed Philip. He can hardly move. He can move more than you think when he wants to. What, Philip? Mary will tell the others it will turn on me. So, so Philip could be the killer. What? I'd never even considered. But he could have. Uh, Philip wouldn't hurt anyone. But he's capable. He's been very keen to cast suspicion on the rest of you, and, and Mary would cover for him. Not anymore. Not after she saw him kiss me. Well, if Philip is the killer, Mary could be in danger. We, we have to get back. Mary, is Dr. Calgary here? I have no idea, Tina. Excuse me. What's happened? Are you leaving? I've called a cab. Say goodbye to Father from me. I don't know when I'll be back. Where's Philip? Philip can rot in hell for all I can... Tina, I, I wasn't expecting you for tea. Is Philip in his room? I assume so. That's why I'm taking his tea. What's the matter? I've just seen Mary. I think they've had a row. Better let me take the train. Of course. Let me get the door for you. Mary! Thank God you're all right. I'll never be all right again, thanks to you, Hester. Excuse me, this is my cab. Is Philip in your room? I... Kirsten! Quickly, come on. Tina! Oh. She fainted. Drop the tray. Nancy? Tina? Tina, wake up. I need to call an ambulance. Where's Philip? Oh. Look, please, don't open What's the door. What's going on? We heard a scream. What's, what, why shouldn't he open the door? Tina has fainted. Gwenda, will you please attend to her whilst I go to the phone? Yes, of course. Poor Tina. Well, why did she faint, Kirsten? I need to call the police. Please, do not open the door until they arrive. Why not? What's wrong with Philip? Stop her, please. Dr. Calgary, she must be no. sick. Philip? They want one of us to go in the ambulance. Leo is too distressed when Gwenda won't leave his side. I'll go. He was my husband. I think the police will want to talk to you, Mary. You think it was me that I could ever hurt Philip? Well, you were the last person to see him alive, that's all. It is Tina whom they wish to be accompanied. I will go if I'm not needed here. No, no, it has to be one of us. 
I want to go with my husband and my sister. The police can talk to me there. Why are they taking Tina to hospital? She only fainted. It seems that's not the case. At some point after she dropped the tray and fainted, it seems she was injured. Injured? How? Just in the fall or by someone else? They will not tell me. But she has not yet woken up. So she can't say who did it, if it was someone else. Look, let me talk to the police and see what I can find out. It must have been one of us, or Father and Gwenda. We were the only ones there. It all happened so fast. I wasn't watching anyone else. We must all keep watch now, Hester. Be on our guard. What did the police say, Dr. Calgary? I need to talk to Hester first. Alone, if you don't mind. You need to rest, Mary, and eat something. Come along. What is it, Dr. Calgary? Why can't you tell the others? You're the only one I can be sure of. I've done some pretty crazy things these past few days. I can't think why you'd begin to trust me. You couldn't have killed Philip. Mary saw him after you'd left. He must have been killed while you were with me. Maybe he killed himself after what happened with us. He did love Mary. The guilt might have been too much. The killer might have wanted us to think that. That's why they used poison this time, but... Tina's injury rather suggests it was murder. She was stabbed. Well, that's impossible. Superintendent Hewish just told me. It must have happened after she'd fainted. Someone saw their chance and tried to finish her off. Why would they want to do that? Well, she must have seen something that gave the killer away. It's the only explanation. The killer panicked, had to get rid of her. But I've looked and I, I don't know what she saw. Well, when she wakes up, she can tell us. If she does wake up. If the killer doesn't get to her first. You do think it was Mary? Well, I think Mary had motive and opportunity. I certainly don't think she should be left alone by Tina's bedside. No. No, I should be the one to go. I agree, although... I'm scared for you, too. I'll be safer there than here, in this viper's nest. It could have been Mary or Kirsten, or Father, or Gwenda. They arrived moments after. I do remember seeing Gwenda cradling Tina on the floor. Viper's Point. That's what it was called, wasn't it? Before your mother christened at Sunny Point? She never faced up to how things really were. She told herself she was a great mother, that we all loved her, but even now it seems we all had a reason to want her dead. All of you except Tina. Tina, mother, Jacko, Philip. You'll know who the killer is soon. You'll be the only one of us left standing. No, I won't let that happen. You've made all of this happen in a way. If you hadn't come back... If that truck had finished me off, you'd all have lived happily ever after, never knowing there was still a killer in your family. Would you really have preferred that? No. In spite of everything, I, I'm glad you came. I will make this right, Hester. I promise. I know you will, Arthur. You should go to the hospital. Let me know as soon as Tina wakes up. What are you going to do? Find the killer, without anyone else getting hurt. Good afternoon, Dr. Calgary. Superintendent Hewish, I'd like to help, if I may. I might have been wrong to blame you for coming forward, stirring this all up again. Fair enough, you thought it was your duty to clear that Torek's name, but you're to blame for what's gone on since. You have blood on your hands, Calgary. With respect, Superintendent, if you put as much effort into rooting out the real killer as you do into accusing me, you might have solved this already. I told you, I'd interviewed them all. What did you think you'd achieve, mounting your own amateur investigation? You'd given up on them. Somebody had to do something, and it didn't take much effort to get them to ditch that burglary story and start talking. And as soon as they did, what happened? Exactly what I predicted. The killer felt under pressure, and now we've got one, maybe two other corpses. Philip knew the risk he was taking. I didn't make him do anything. The man was an invalid, a sitting duck. Not so constrained he couldn't get up from his chair to grab Hester and kiss her. Hmm? In his last day, he lived more than he did for the last few years. He might even be flattered that for a while back there, I thought he could be the killer. What's this about Hester? Did Philip's wife know about this kiss? You see? Now we've got fresh evidence. Look, if we work together and share our knowledge, we can solve this and prevent any more bloodshed. Hmm. Let's go inside. You better tell me everything you know. Let's start with Hester Argyle. Hester was with me on the cliffs. We came back together after Philip's body was found. It couldn't have been her. What about Leo Argyle? He was a couple of doors down the hallway in his study, with Gwenda Vaughan. His secretary. And fiancé. 
Mm. They were going to announce it before I turned up. Oh. Funny how they forgot to mention that. So, your news must have put a spanner in the works. They were still planning to go ahead when the dust had settled. But if the dust wasn't settling, if someone was on to them, they could need to tidy up. Well, they came out of the room a few moments after Tina fainted. Hester saw them go to her. Motive and opportunity. Well, they're not the only ones. Mary had a huge row with Philip. When we arrived, she'd, she'd packed her bags and was making a swift exit. She also had chance to stab Tina in all the confusion upstairs. Hmm. When you talked to Mary, did you find any reason why she might have killed her mother? They all had reasons. Leo, Gwenda, all of the children. Rachel Argyle wasn't quite the saint she appeared to be. Only Tina appeared to really like her. So she'd be the one to come forward if she knew something? Wait, she said something. Tina, when I talked to her this afternoon, she said, I hope I don't know anything. Because it could get her killed? Well, because she loved the rest of her family, too. She didn't want to believe they could kill. Did you get any idea who she could have meant? Philip said Tina was in love with Mickey. And he doesn't hide the fact that he hated his mother and Jacko. But he wasn't at the house when Philip died. Not as far as we know. Well, he definitely wasn't there when Tina was stabbed. He could be working with someone. This servant, Kirsten Lindstrom. Well, she loves all the children. And she wasn't so keen on Mrs Argyle, by all accounts, but that's not much of a motive for two, maybe three murders. Yeah. She still maintains that Jacko killed his mother, even with my alibi. Well, she can't blame Jacko for these latest crimes. Well, let's see what she says. No, no, not so fast, Calgary. Thank you for the insights, but you can let me handle it from here. But you said I could help you. You can, by going back to your hotel. Or to the mainland, ideally, and staying there safe till the court case. It's my responsibility. I could wait here, watch people, see if anyone lets something slip. We know what happened to the last chap who did that. I'll get one of my men to drive you back to Drymouth. No. No, thank you. I'd rather walk. You have done the right thing, Superintendent. That man has caused nothing but trouble since he came. You'd rather Jacko's name was never cleared? Jacko killed his mother. I do not care what Dr Calgary says did or did not happen. Mm. What happened this afternoon to Philip? I was taking him his tea at the usual time. Mm. Tina came in saying Philip and Mary had argued. She offered to take the tray in. The next thing I knew, the tray crashed to the floor. I saw that Philip was slumped on his desk. I, I think I screamed. Tina fainted. I went to help her, but then Dr. Calgary and Hester arrived with Mary. Then Leo and Gwenda, it's all, all a blur after that. I knew nothing about Tina's injury until the ambulance men informed me. Mm. Did you also take Philip's lunch to his room? You think that is what poisoned him? I made soup for him and Mary. They both ate from the same tureen, drank from the same teapot. She would be dead too. Unless she added the poison to his share. Mary loved Philip. People kill those they love, Miss Lindstrom, all the time. I've never loved anyone else except Philip. When he got ill, he was scared I would leave him, but I stayed, looked after him. He knew I would never do anything to hurt him. Was he going to leave you, Mary? No, never. He needed me. What were you arguing about? The games he was playing, helping Dr. Calgary find the killer. I was worried for his safety. And why would you be leaving him alone, in danger? I... You'd packed your cases. Hester kissed him. I was upset, but not upset enough to kill him. It wasn't his fault, he was helpless. Are you sure it was Hester who made the move? Of course. I know what she's like. Craving attention, manipulating people, not caring who gets hurt. Why haven't you made her stay for questioning? She was with Dr Calgary when your husband was killed. But so he says. Haven't you seen how he looks at her? She uses all her little actress tricks to play men exactly the way she wants. She and Jacko had a lot in common. And now you've bought everything that Calgary man has said and you've let Hester take care of poor little Tina. Constable. Sir? Get our man at the hospital to keep a close watch on Hester Argyle and get Calgary back here at once. He might be such a reliable witness after all. Yes, sir. Calgary. Oh, Mickey. I'm sorry about Tina. 
Everyone's praying she'll pull through. I'm off to the house now, see if I can help the police as they finally decided to pull their finger out. I thought you'd be up there helping them. This is where I picked Jacko up on the night your mother died. Oh. I've been thinking, what if... What if it hadn't rained? If I hadn't stopped, if I hadn't come back? Even if I'd left after that first night, Philip and Tina might still be safe. They were hardly very welcoming. Why did you stay? I had this dream that night about Jacko, telling me I had to find the real killer. It was so real. And that was you, not Jacko. But Jacko wouldn't have any sense of justice. Just because he didn't kill our mother doesn't make him an innocent. Well, so I should have just gone and left you all to fester? I thought so, but now, after what's happened to Tina, now I understand. I want whoever did this brought to justice, whatever the cost. Will you help me? I don't see what more I can do. I've got something to tell the police. New evidence. Well, new old evidence about my mother's murder. Well, what is it? Now, Tina came to see me earlier after talking to you. Well, she implied that she knew something, but she wouldn't tell me why. She was protecting me, so she thought. The night Mother died, she heard two voices outside the window. Just whispers, so she couldn't tell even it was a man or a woman. She thought it was Jacko and me. She thought we were in it together. But she never told anyone? We've always been close. Made each other laugh, looked out for each other. It wasn't till today when she told me that I realized how strongly she felt for me. Strong enough to shield you from the law all this time? It wasn't me, though, I swear. That's why she was going back to Sunny Point. To tell you and Philip what she thought she'd heard, but the killer got to her first. You have to tell the police before the killer gets to you. And there's strength in numbers. Will you come with me? Back to Sunny Point. Mr. Argyle, Miss Vaughan, I hear congratulations are in order. My son-in-law has been murdered. My daughter is in hospital, close to death. And yet you're busy in your study picking out dates for a summer wedding. Isn't that what you were doing, Miss Vaughan, over lunch today? The ink on the diary was barely dry when my man inspected your desk. I wanted to take Leo's mind off these dreadful things. She thinks I'll give up on her. That this scandal will finish us just like it did to Hester and Don Craig, to Mary and... Poor Philip. You don't think he could have just wanted to end it? And that Tina stabbed herself in the back? I just don't see why anyone would ever want to hurt them. I do. Really, Mr Argyle? Then I hope you'll enlighten us. I haven't spoken out against any of my family. I promised myself I wouldn't. Even Jacko. I was careful never to blame him for his actions. But now this must be stopped. Hmm. Who would want to hurt Philip and Tina? Well, they wouldn't want to, but if they had to, Mary, Mickey, Hester, they're survivors. All of them. Before my wife and I took them in, they all had to fight for their lives. We did everything we could to give them a sense of security, but deep inside, if they feel under threat, perhaps they would do anything it takes to escape justice. Kirsten, where's the superintendent? Stay with your father and Gwenda. What is he doing back? Uh, Calgary's with me. Will you let the superintendent know I want to see him? He will not be pleased to know you are here, Dr. Calgary. Then best not to tell him yet. Any word from the hospital? I believe a guard has been stationed at Tina's bedside. Why? Is Hester coming back? I believe it is Hester whom he must guard against. That's crazy. I told Hewish she was innocent. Maybe he is beginning to doubt your word. What does that mean? Why would he doubt me? Maybe he thinks you've fallen for Hester. You wouldn't be the first. Well, I, I haven't told any lies to protect her. But you might if you had to. No, of course not. That's what Tina would have said. And what I'd have said about her. I'd have said anything done anything to save her if I'd had the chance. You've no idea how far you'll go for someone you care about. That's what Jacko's wife said. About the women who cared for him. He could get them to do anything. Mickey, you can go in now. Wait here, Calgary. I'll call you when I need backup. Mm -hmm. Be nice to him, Kirsten. He could be one of the family someday. <sighs> can I get you anything to drink, Dr. Calgary? Uh, yes, thank you. Scotch, if you've got it. Of course. Yeah. It's all right, I'll get it. Uh, no. It might be Hester. I'll get it. And you can uh, get me that scotch, if you don't mind. I do not mind. Make yourself at home. Hello? Arthur, I'm so glad it's you. Are you all right? 
What? What's all this about a guard? Tina's woken up. What? What has she said? Uh, not a lot. She's still very bleary. Can't remember much. She just keeps saying something about a cup. The cup was empty. Something like that. Will you come down and talk to her? You might be able to make sense of it. I don't know if I can, Hester. I promised Mickey Please, that I... Please, Arthur. I feel so scared. The way the guards keep watching me. What is she saying? Let me speak to her. Wait there, Hester. I'm on my way. What did she say about Tina? She's woken up. I have to get down there. I, I will take you in the car. I want to see Tina. I have been so worried. It's very good of you to be so forthcoming, Mickey, but what I don't understand is why did Tina think it was you and Jacko? She couldn't even tell it was two men. She was pretty sure it was Jacko all along. Even when Dr Calgary came and cleared him, she thought it could still have been him if he'd been working with this other person. But why did she jump to the conclusion that this other person was you? Because she knew how much I hated our mother. If Jacko could have relied on anyone to help him kill her, she'd be right to assume it would be me. So, she let you get away with it, let Jacko take all the blame, and only got worried when she thought you might finally be caught. Well, Tina hasn't a malicious bone in her body. Her instinct is to protect people. Even murderers? She said she thought she'd understood why I did it. But she looked mighty relieved when I told her she was wrong. I never laid a finger on her mother. I was too afraid of her. So, if it wasn't you with Jacko... Who do you think it was? Sir? What is it, Constable? A message from the hospital, sir. Tina Argyle's awake. Oh, thank God. Of course, she can tell us herself now who it was who wanted her dead. The cup was empty. What could that mean? Tina was probably dreaming. When I came around after my accident, I couldn't remember any dreams. But I remembered what happened with Jacko. If Tina remembered, why would she not just say who had hurt her straight away? She fainted. The cup, the tea tray, that must have been the last thing she saw. Or Philip's cup on the desk in front of him from lunch. I believe the police suspect that Mary put poison in it. Yes, it makes sense that it was Mary. I mean, she had a reason to kill Philip and Tina if she saw something, but... What is it, Dr. Calgary? What Tina told Mickey about hearing voices... What voices? On the night Rachel Argyle was killed. Tina heard Jacko whispering with someone outside. I... I don't believe it. She's... she's dreaming again. That girl... I know, she knew all along. She thought she was protecting Mickey, but it wasn't him. Could it have been Mary? Philip was asleep. Mary could have gone out. Well, yes, she had the opportunity, but I'm... I'm just not sure. Would Mary have conspired with Jacko to kill their own mother? I, mean, I, I could see her doing it alone, or with Philip, but with Jacko? It seems unlikely. You barely know any of us, Doctor. How would you tell what is likely and what is not? I think that was the turning for Drymouth, wasn't it? Kirsten, what are you doing? The cup was empty. The cup was empty. Mm. She was carrying a tray, Philip's tea. But Kirsten was taking it to him. That cup would have been full. Oh, it should have been. What if it wasn't? If Kirsten had been taking the tray out and only changed her story on the spot when Tina came upstairs and caught her. So she let Tina take the tray and find the body? She might have got away with her story if Tina really had fainted straight away, but what if she just dropped the tray in shock and then realised and said... The cup was empty. Where's Kirsten? Back at the house. So turn around, quick. Yeah. Kirsten, slow down. What are you doing? It was Jaco. It was all him. He killed his mother. He might have been in the car with you. I might have held the weapon in my hand. It was you? You did it? No. You're not listening. I knew nobody would ever understand. You and Jaco? You, you planned it together? No. It was all Jaco. He made me. How could he make you do a thing like that if you didn't want to? I didn't want to. I didn't do it! Kirsten, slow down. Pull over. I gave him all my money. I took more from Rachel, but he still needed more. He said we would run away. But he couldn't till Rachel was gone. She had this hold over us. And if she was dead, you'd all get the rest of your money. 
I love him. He said he loved me. It's no good. His wife said he used to con her boss. They laughed about how easy it was. If I'd known he was married, I would never have done it. I would never have hurt anyone. It was all his plan. Draco. Draco used me. He, he, he lied to me. He, he cheated on me with that little slut, and I, I wanted him to rot in prison. He deserved to die, and so do you. Fuck, where's Kirsten? We need to speak to her. The car's out. Maybe she went for a drive. Hester's just rung. Dr. Calgary said he'd go to the hospital, but he's not turned up. H has he been with you, Mickey? No, he, he was with Kirsten. They've probably gone for a drive together. Uh, we have to find them. No, he's nothing to do with this. Why would she take him? It's his fault. He stirred it all up again. Stop the car, Kirsten. Let me out. You should have died in that accident. You should never have gone. I don't deserve to die. I told you to go, but you would not listen. Like Philip, he kept pushing, asking questions. I had to protect myself. So protect yourself. Let me out. You could still get away. It's too late. Tina is awake and there is no way off this island without getting caught. And I will not be caught. They won't hang you. Oh. You can explain. It was Jacko. I know I am innocent. God will be my judge. I survived for a reason. That was someone's will. God's or my own. I don't know. But I know I didn't come back to die like this. What are you doing? God, forgive me. I've never hurt anyone but... Do you remember your name? Calgary. Mm. Arthur Calgary. How long have I been out? Only a couple of days this time. Do you remember what happened? I hit Kirsten. Really hard. It, it hurt my fist. I knocked her out and... Uh, and then I took the wheel. We, we skidded away from the edge of the cliff and then... I don't remember anything else. We found you, Mickey and I. Got you an ambulance. Where is she? She was dead when we got there. I, I killed her. The crash killed her. That's what she wanted, wasn't it? She wanted us both dead. She's got more than enough blood on her hands, and your conscience should be clear. She made me do it. And Jacko made her. She said he was the real killer right up to the end. Well, she was right in a way. I shouldn't think the Home Secretary will be in any hurry to grant him a pardon now. Family certainly won't be pressing for it. They're just glad it's over, <sighs> thanks to you. I don't imagine they feel much like thanking me. On the contrary, one of them has been waiting here for you every waking hour. Where will you go when they've discharged you? I haven't had a chance to think. You could have Mary and Philip's old room. It's all set up for a wheelchair. I won't be in a wheelchair for long. I'm not coming to live at Sunny Point. <laughs> It'll be empty then. Father and Gwenda are getting married, going overseas. Mickey and Tina are getting married too, moving in together in Drymouth. And Mary's gone home to her flat. There'll only be me. Can't you marry Donald Craig? Now that he knows you aren't going to try and bump him off. No. I don't think Donald is the one for me, after all. Neither do I. And I haven't even met the man. He should have known I was innocent. If he'd loved me, he'd have known. Hester. Yes, Arthur? Stop for a moment, would you? Come here. Why? What are you going to... That. By Georgie Fuller. Ordeal by Innocence was dramatised by Joy Wilkinson and the director was Mary Pete. Audible hopes you've enjoyed this programme.